Let's have a nice hand for Ross Schaefer. Feeling very steadily tonight? I am. I, uh, I went bungee jumping. I know. <laughs> now I went. You don't have to go. I went. I went because I'm overcoming a lot of my fears. I have a lot of fears. I'm, I'm afraid of uh, like large women with the tattoos of tractors. <laughs> I'm afraid of uh, of men's uh, uh, thong underwear and uh, and bungee jump. So I went bungee jump to get over this fear. Now I'm going to tell you this: when you go to bungee jump, you want how many of you want to go? You want to go? All right, why do you want to go? I'm going to tell you, when you show up for bungee jumping, you'll find out there is no line for bungee jumping. <laughs> when you get there, you're the first in line. <laughs> but there's a lot of people who want to watch it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Bungee, bungee, bungee. <laughs> so I stand in line there and I pay the $70, which I thought was a lot of money, but it included the toilet paper. <laughs> And uh, so now, now I go over and I, and I stand in the special bungee spot and where, where they, uh, the assistant comes up and he uh, straps on your ankles a Velcro harness. Now I'm thinking there should be more than Velcro. <laughs> they should be drilling a long bolt through my ankle. <laughs> twerking it down on both ends for me. Bunch. So I take off my leather belt, you know, and I wrap that around just for a little extra security for me. Now. I get into the cage to go up uh, 200 feet. So I go up in the cage, 50 feet, 150 feet, 200 feet up in the air with a rubber band on your ankles. <laughs> and I'm looking down, and they have one of those inflated stuntman mats that you see in the movies, but it's not under the bungee jump. It's under the Ferris wheel. <laughs> yeah, and so a bungee assistant goes, oh, don't worry, dude, the wind will blow you into it. <laughs> And it hits me, I'm getting trajectory advice from some 17-year-old acne captain on loan from the tilt world over there. <laughs> but everybody's chanting, bungee, bungee, bungee. <laughs> can't back out, can't back out. So I do it. I take off into midair. And, and you have to, I lean off the platform. I don't look down. You have to lean off into the platform. Now, what happens is exactly what you think would happen. Your life, your entire life. Everybody you've ever talked to, everybody you met, people you don't like, people you like, flashes in front of your eyes that fast. The problem is you've got another 150 feet to go. <laughs> now the bungee cord snaps you to a halt about 12 feet above the ground. 12 feet above the ground. And it was at that moment I wished I'd kept my belt on my pants. <laughs> Happened to be the day I was experimenting with thong underwear. <laughs> so now, here, here's what I found out now. Now, the people who bungee jump a lot will actually have a chiropractic effect. Their, their spines stretch from the bungee action. People have grown up to an inch. I swear, so if I go again, I am not strapping that harness to my ankles. <laughs> That's the kind of adventure I have. I, I did that, and then I worked in the Reno at the Nugget. Have you ever been to the Nugget in Reno? Anything? I go, you have been there? All right, when I show up, I, I'm, I'm anxious to see who I'm going to work with. So I asked the stage manager, I said, who's the other comedian on the bill with me? It's, oh, we, we don't have our comedian. We have an elephant. <laughs> Excuse me, you have a, well, we have an elephant named Bertha. She weighs 8,000 pounds. She's been here for 28 years. She does a tight nine minutes, then you go on. <laughs> Yeah, Bertha does a tight nine, then I go on. All right, here's what Bertha does for her nine-minute act. <laughs> Talk about rocket-based entertainment. This is... But I'm thinking someday she'll have a heart attack, tip over to the audience, you'll get your money's worth out of the cover check. So... Anyway, so, let's go. so Bertha and I are working together. It's going fine for five nights. Six nights, though, they knock on my dressing room door. Like, uh, Mr. Schaefer, we have uh, to talk to you. We have a little problem with uh, Bertha there. Uh, she has indigestion uh, pretty bad and uh, hasn't had a, a proper movement in about 18 days. So <laughs> we're uh, kind of wondering what you'd like to do about it. 
what I'd like to do about it. I'm going to tell you, folks, I read the paper, I keep up, but when it comes to pachyderm gastrointestinal disorders, I, uh, I am shy on information. But I think she's been here 28 years. She's a professional elephant. Why don't we, don't let, her, let her go on. Why don't we just let her perform tonight? She's been through it, I'm sure. I was a, what a mistake. Oh, God. That night, poor Bertha is in horrible gastric pain. She's, <laughs> glaring at me because she knows I'm the one who made her work. <laughs> but she's a professional. No mistakes whatsoever throughout her entire nine minute act. No mistakes. She closes to thunderous applause. Curtain goes like that. Backstage, though, the people out front can't hear that Bertha finds relief. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like the Coast Guard has docked in Reno. <laughs> and we have now the wafting elephant winds of war <laughs> backstage. Now I'm going to confide in you folks. When an elephant severs the wind, <laughs> it is not invisible. <laughs> when you eat 250 pounds of wheat and barley every day, <laughs> For 28 years, you manufacture a dusty olive fog. <laughs> and, it, and it's filling up the backstage air. Filling up. Now, now Bertha leaves blinking at me. <laughs> so now they turned on fans in the back to try to dissipate the fog. At that moment, I hear him announce my name. Ladies and gentlemen, Ross Schaefer. Third notice, me in the fog blown into the audience. <laughs> Do you think they figured out it was Bertha? <laughs> Thank you very much, you've been great. Thanks a lot. Ross Schaefer, everybody. Very, very funny.